Hello, I'm Anne Catherine, and today I'm going to talk to you about Opus 1144, what I promised already a, a long time ago. Uh, Opus 1144 was created by Filippo Sorcinelli for his own brand, Unum. Opus 1144 is dedicated to the beginning of Gothic architecture, and you could call it a uh, floriental, but you could also see it uh, as a kind of a uh, light or slightly gourmand. Um, I will talk about it later, that will all become uh, clear. And um, well, for sure, for me, it is really a complex perfume, uh, like uh, old school perfumes used to be. And uh, it starts from yeah, French old school uh, style perfumes. But well, first, talk about Filippo Sorcinelli, because he's really a remarkable artist. Uh, he's what you could call uh, an all-round artist. He works as a painter, he makes installations, but he's also a photographer, he makes videos from his, for his own uh, perfumes. In uh, 2001, he started a studio called Laos, which means praise. Amongst his clients, he can count uh, the last two popes, uh, Benedetto and Francesco. Not everybody can say that. So I think he's really uh, incredibly uh, creative and productive and he is famous for his first uh, perfume called Laos, which is uh, a really wonderful uh, incense-based perfume, but his other perfumes like Opus 1144 are not so famous yet. Opus 1144 refers to the beginning of Gothic architecture and he created it in 2015. In Fragrantica you can read uh, that the bottom of this perfume is made of white musks and grey amber. I never heard of a bottom in a perfume. Well, if you have a bottom, you also have a top, of course, so it's logical. The white musks and the grey amber are make uh, the bottom of this perfume and the grey amber fixes the other olfactory pyramid components. Um, you can read on Fragantica. But the base uh, consists of leather, vanilla, sandal and Indian wood. And those talk together and facilitate spiritual growth. He uses benzoin from Sumatra, which is a whitish resin like a sweet balsam in the perfume. And then you have the heart. The heart is made of a cashmere wood, iris and orchid. And then at the top you have elemi, jasmine, bergamot and tangerine. And those last two bergamot and tangerine, their harmony to the whole spiritual composition, which is in, indeed, you can um, experience them uh, for quite a few hours in the composition. Uh, unlike bergamot and tangerine normally, they only last for uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So that's really uh, an innovation in this perfume. A few weeks ago, I contacted uh, Filippo Sorcinelli on his website and asked him why he chose those notes uh, to symbolize the beginning of Gothic architecture. Because each time I wear it, it really puzzles me. Um, I never got an answer, but that was a challenge to me now to interpret it myself and try to figure out why he uh, choose for this composition and those notes. So it's my own interpretation. First talk about uh, the beginning of Gothic architecture. Abbot Suger was a Frenchman, he was a politician, he was a friend and a, a personal counselor of the two kings, Louis the Sixth and the Seventh, and he was also an historian and even an architect. Abbot Suger lived from the end of the 11th century until 1151 and um, in, at about 1140 he wanted to create a new uh, choir. He designed a new choir for the St. Denis church where he was an abbot. It's uh, nearby Paris where he wanted to design a choir that was suffused with light. So that's a big difference with uh, Romanesque architecture. So 
it's not that this style comes completely from uh, zero, that it's just, and, and all of a sudden it's a completely new style. Of course, it evolves, and uh, at the late Romanesque architecture, you have already certain features that are taken over in Gothic architecture. But um, Abbot Suger wanted really to have all those new features to get come together, and he wanted the new choir to depict the heavenly Jerusalem. It was an optimistical approach. It was not the Romanesque approach of the early Middle Ages, where you have the feeling that you're walking in a um, kind of a fortress with uh, thick walls, tiny windows. Um, you feel safe in this kind of Romanesque architecture. But uh, it doesn't make you happy. It's, it's just uh, a dark, um, area, uh, very mystical of course, but it has a completely other feeling or, or experience than uh, Gothic architecture, which is full of light and colors because of the stained glass. If, if the sunlight comes from through the stained glass, you, you have the, the playing of all, all those beautiful colors and you have the verticalizing elements. To, they wanted to make uh, the heavenly Jerusalem, they wanted to, to have uh, uh, buildings that were as high as possible, like in Spain, the, the, the cathedral of Burgos and Leon, is, they are really huge. Uh, and then it was really a tour de force at that time, um, but they developed it because of, uh, for example, the flying buttresses. So this new choir already had those features. It was designed with pointed arches instead of round arches, typical for Romanesque architecture. We also had ribbed folds. Uh, and the flying buttresses, which make it able to have uh, really large windows with uh, a lot of light coming through. Okay, let's talk about the perfume now. Um, I think this perfume is based uh, upon the traditional old school perfumes like Chalimar and also Leur Bleu from Guerlain. But it also has really a new uh, aestheticism, some new elements in it, but uh, I think especially about uh, the bergamot and lime-like opening. Uh, it's really very sharp at the beginning of the perfume. It's really fascinating, it's a bit weird. But I would describe it like kind of a bergamot sorbet or even an ice cream more, because it's more uh, thick than, than just the, the bergamot we, we are used to in perfumes, which uh, disappears um, around about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, which is very uh, fluid. Uh, no, with this bergamot you can, you can uh, experience uh, a few hours, so it's really so different. Kafkaeske describes it as like uh, it's a millefeuille tart, uh, with bergamot in it. Yeah, it's, it's really close to it. And it's a very refined vanilla. It's a bourbon uh, vanilla, but not cloying, not, not sugary at all. Well, after a few hours, the bergamot uh, is going to disappear little by little. And um, the resins, also the powderiness, become more prominent. Then sometimes I have the feeling that it has a, a beeswaxy effect, uh, which reminds me of uh, Chalimar. Uh, and it's also because of yeah, the leather and the vanilla coming more uh, prominent. But the powderiness uh, also reminds me of, of uh, Leur Bleu, so it's, it's more like the violet uh, candy powderiness, which is very, very refined. But uh, you don't have the skankiness of Chalimar. I tried Chalimar this afternoon and to me it's, it smells like mothballs. It's, I think it's the, the civet I, I really don't like in it. But in this perfume, this is all left out, all the... The things I really don't like about uh, Chalimar are uh, not in it, so for me it's fantastic. Um, and if you read the comments on Fragrantica, it's admired by lovers of Chalimar and also the people who don't really like Chalimar, so it's 
really a good uh, thing for Filippo Sorcinelli that uh, Shalimar lovers and also Shalimar, yeah, not haters but not likers, uh, can appreciate it and really love it. It's a perfume which stays really very long and uh, in the dry down for me um, it has a lot of uh, vanilla supported by the ember. I, I have the uh, bourbon vanilla now which is coming through um, and at the other hand the more skanky uh, uh, skanky Chalimar. If we talk about the longevity of this perfume uh, I think it's very long lasting. I think you can Notice it for at least uh, eight hours and if you have worn it on your clothes the next morning you will still notice uh, the beautiful dry down. The projection, the projection for me is hard to know. Uh, nobody ever has uh, commented it uh, for me on, on it when I've worn it. Also on Fragrantica many people comment on it that it really has a beautiful train trail. It leaves a beautiful trail. And um, the stiage is also uh, really, really good and it has a good, uh, nice projection. People notice it. So to me, this perfume really reminds me of, of the uh, actresses from the uh, 50s playing in those black and white films with their silk gloves and their wasp waist. Uh, like, for example, Audrey Hepburn. It reminds me really of, of uh, Audrey Hepburn. So when I wear it, I feel a bit uh, sophisticated. It has a, a kind of elegance to it, but also a bit of mysteriousness, which I really, uh, really love. Since the perfumer didn't reply to Anne Katrin's email asking why he chose the notes that he chose to symbolize the beginning of Gothic architecture, I'm going to try to summarize her take on it. And Katrin's interpretation is that similarly to the way in which Gothic architecture stemmed from characteristics of late Romanesque architecture, Opus 1144 was inspired by old school classics Chalimar and Leur Bleu. So Opus 1144 does clearly share some big characteristics and notes with these two old timers, but it adds some extra sophistication and a couple of innovative elements. So Opus 1144 has the same base notes as Chalimar, the citrusy notes, the vanilla, sandalwood, and the resins. But in Opus 1144, these notes don't come forward as a homogeneous concoction like they do in Chalimar. In Chalimar, think thick walls, dark, mysterious, as in the Romanesque architecture. But they rather come forward here as a sequence of long-lasting bergamot, lime and vanilla, which gives the whole a more cheerful, light, gourmand touch. So it's less oriental, more open, more colorful, and has a lighter structure. Just as Gothic architecture departs from the Romanesque style, adding more openness and color with the large color stained windows. And the walls no longer need to be as thick, thanks to those flying buttresses. So basically, Chalimar is older, or more old school, more old lady-like perhaps, heavier, more mysterious, since the notes are mixed together as one mysterious whole. And it's more difficult to discern the different notes as they develop than it is in Opus 1144. So 1144 is lighter, thanks to the long-lasting citrus notes. It's more optimistic and playful, perhaps, thanks to the more gourmand vanillic notes in contrast to Chalimar's darker, more eastern vanillic vibe. And it's more playful and colorful, since it's less mysterious and more tangible and comprehensible, since you don't just get one mix of notes, but you can see the separate stages and developments more clearly. So even though it does seem to depart from a Chalimar DNA, it's more refined and sophisticated, it's younger, it's fresher, and this freshness or lightness evoked by the bergamot is more prominent and long-lasting here, maybe symbolizing the extra sunlight shining through the many large windows of the typical Gothic church. Um, in a long nutshell, that's Anne Catherine's take, and I hope you guys found it just as interesting as I did. 
and definitely feel free to comment below or just let us know what you'd like to see from us in the future in the future because uh, suggestions will always be welcomed have a good one and see you soon bye bye see you next time God,